Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Standard and today we're going to talk about Akadana Actors with Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. Uh, this video is both about how to inject things into actors, but also how to inject actors into other things such as ASP.NET controllers. We made a version of this video a few years ago and the reason why we're remaking it is because since then, Akadot hosting was introduced to the Akadana ecosystem, which tremendously simplifies the experience of configuring Akadotnet. There's no Hocon anymore, for instance, and it also allows you to integrate much more closely with the entire Microsoft.extensions ecosystem. So that includes uh, dependency injection, configuration, hosting, logging, and also health checks. You can learn more about Akadot hosting in this video link up here, but otherwise, let's go ahead and dive into the material. So to install Akadot Hosting, you're going to want to pick one of the Akadot Hosting NuGet packages. So Akadot Cluster Hosting is what I use whenever I'm working on distributed systems. That's going to bring in everything, essentially. But if you just want to use the bare minimum, you could always just install the standalone Akadot Hosting package. So if you're building just a local in-process Akadot application, or let's say you want to use actors behind the scenes inside an ASP.NET app, the Akadot Hosting package is all that you need. The version number that you see here aligns to the version of Akka.net that the Akka hosting package is currently using. Akka.net hosting uses the Akka.net dependency injection package behind the scene. That's our official Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection package. Uh, this allows us to basically create a set of props. Props are the formulas we use for instantiating and restarting actors. It allows you to specify some props that are going to use Microsoft's service provider to resolve the constructor arguments for an actor. Now, one thing that we also support is the ability to mix arguments that had to be resolved via DI and ones that don't. And you'll see an example of where this might be useful a little bit later. First, let's go and take a look at an old fashioned example. If you're not using Akadot Hosting, the way you might need to work with Microsoft.extensions.di is you might need to create what's called a dependency injection setup, which is actually you don't even see here on this little snippet. It happens further up in the code sample. But you merge that in with your actor system bootstrap, which is where your Hocon configuration might be defined. You pass those setups into the actor system.create method. And then down below, you can go ahead and use the static method, dependency resolver.4, and you pass in a reference to your actor system. Then you call dot props. This will go ahead and allow you to create a props instance that's going to start a hasher actor and it will dependency inject all those actors' arguments. This is much simpler with Akka hosting. So this syntax you're seeing on screen right here is what starting up like a headless service or a Windows service might look like using Microsoft.extensions.hosting. We call the configure services method and we call add Akka. This is the primary Akka hosting method right here. This is going to create a a hosted service that's going to start Akka.net behind the scenes, and it's going to go ahead and launch all these actors you specify inside these with actors methods right here. So what we also get in this little method is we get a reference to our actor system. That's that right there. The actor registry, which is going to be important for injecting actors into other things later. And then we get the dependency resolver, which is the exact same piece of code you saw on the previous slide. So down here, for instance, I am going to just create a regular hello actor, and I'm going to go ahead and register that hello actor in the actor registry right here. Act the actor registry is optional, but if you want to have the ability to inject this actor into another actor, or the ability to inject it into things like an ASP.NET controller or a minimal web API method, you're going to want to use the registry to set that up. But then finally down here, when I call with actors a second time, I'm going to create this timer actor and I'm going to use the resolver, the dependency resolver, to inject constructor arguments into it. In this case, the constructor argument is going to be a reference to our hello actor up here. So the other thing is that we are able to use Akka.hosting to inject actors into other things. In this case, this is our timer actor we just saw a minute ago. We are going to use this I have required actor type. This is built into Akka hosting. And this I've required actor is going to take a generic argument belonging to another actor registered in the, ACA re in the uh, actor registry. So this hello actor will get injected into the constructor. We'll go ahead and result, basically access the actor ref property on this required actor, and then we can send the actor messages. This allows you to pass around actor references via DI, just like any other service registration you might have. So the way the actor registry works for dependency injection is on the left, we have our Akadot hosting call to instantiate actors. So we're gonna go ahead and basically register a counter actor down there. On the right, 
I have a web API in ASP.NET uh, controller, and I'm going to pass in a required counter actor into this controller as well, which means that every single time this controller is instantiated when we receive an HTTP request, it is going to resolve this actor from the actor registry and then message it asynchronously and a wait for a response back from the actor and then serve it up via my web API. So this whole process makes working with actors and other non-actor things really quite trivial to do. It's not any different now than any other service registration. We just have this additional step of working with the actor registry inside Akka.net now. That's the only thing we need in order to wire up the actor system to the rest of the Microsoft.extensions DI ecosystem. On top of that, you can also use the actor registry. By the way, the actor registry gets registered as a Microsoft.extensions DI uh, service registration as well. So you can actually inject that directly into things like a background service if you want to. So this actor registry might get injected into this, uh, let's say background service. And I can go ahead and tell the background service, wait until this actor has been populated into the registry and then tell the actor to do things. That way, if you have multiple services all starting in the background and it's not necessarily guaranteed that the Akadana actor is gonna be available immediately, you can do this to go ahead and wait you know, a microsecond or a millisecond, however long basically it takes for that actor to start. It's usually within that order of magnitude. We're talking you know, thousandths of a second. Uh, it'll go ahead and um, let you await, wait for that item to get populated in the registry, and then you can keep going. Next thing I wanted to show is mixing dependency injection and non-DI'd arguments. So if I have an actor constructor like this, this is for an actor in one of our live production services. This actor uses uh, entity framework under the covers to create materialized views when we're doing a little bit of CQRS. But each one of these actors corresponds to a unique publisher. So this publisher ID argument is populated via Akadot cluster sharding. We might have thousands of publishers at any given time. And we also need to pass in the service provider so we can resolve scopes and use that to access uh, Microsoft's uh, entity framework library correctly. This is what our actors constructor looks like. And this is what the Akka hosting plus DI call looks like. I go ahead and I have my shard region that I'm setting up and I have the same little Lambda function that's gonna pass in an actor system, the actor registry and a resolver. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the resolver.props method. I'm gonna pass in my actors type and then right here, S is going to refer to this parameter right here, this little string parameter. So that'll cause the Microsoft.extensions uh, DI system to say, all right, I can resolve this argument dynamically via what's in the service collection, but this argument is going to be passed in via this little parameter value right here. And this will just work behind the scenes. Lastly, I wanna talk a little bit about scope management. If you've ever worked with Entity Framework, you know that Entity Framework is always registered as a scoped dependency by default in .NET. So in order for us to work with it correctly inside our little materialized view actor that I was just showing a minute ago, we have to create a scope and then use that scope to resolve, in this case, it's going to be our Entity Framework context. Akka.net is designed to be really simple and really quick. We are not going to try to create a whole bunch of magic to scope dependencies for you. And the reason being is that actors can live forever. They're not like ASP.net controllers, which only last for a very short period of time. Actors can have their lifespans measured in months or years, depending on how long the uptime of your service is. Therefore, you wanna arm that actor with the ability to resolve its dependencies and dispose of them on the fly if need be. So if you're passing in, let's say, transient or scope dependencies into an actor, you're going to wanna give that actor a reference to the service provider and allow it to create and dispose scopes on the fly. That will give you the ability to manage the lifespan of your dependencies correctly. And so even if you have a very long lived actor, you'll never run into problems with let's say a life cycle mismatch, which is one of the things that Microsoft warns you about in the Microsoft.extensions.di documentation. So you wanna take advantage of that. Just pass in the service provider, create scopes, resolve your transient and scope dependencies there, dispose of the scope once you're done. Everything will work great when you do that. So just to recap, you want to use Akadot Hosting by default for any new projects going forward. You will, and you'll enjoy your experience working with Akadot.net much more. It'll make the experience of working with DI a lot easier. And it'll make it a lot easier to inject actors into things like gRPC services, ASP.net controllers, or SignalR hubs. 
And then finally, the last thing you want to do is take a look at Akadot templates. Akadot templates is a set of .NET new templates that we ship, which give you ready-made Akadot hosting based solutions right out of the box. Just go ahead and install this. This will also create a bunch of Akadot.net templates you can use in Visual Studio, VS Code, or Writer if you want to. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you got a lot of value of this video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.